In this new episode of the podcast, we talk with Giulio Bonazzi, CEO and President of Aquafil, a company producing Econil Nylon. It's a nylon that instead of coming from oil, comes 100% from waste material and it's used in fashion, design, automotive and more. But in this interview with Giulio, I was more curious to dive into the unique topic of the incredible partnership that Aquafil was able to establish along all their supply chains, and always with the goal to scale sustainability, circular economy and eco-design. This is going to be quite a journey from the crazy idea of Giulio Bonazzi to produce plastic from waste until today with all the partnerships that made Econil the sexiest textile brand in the industry. Hold strong, we are starting. Sustainability at Work is a podcast about sustainability in the workplace and in companies. My name is Samara and I've been working with sustainability for almost 10 years. Hello, Samara, everybody. How are you? Nice Welcome. to see you. <laughs> Thank you for everybody for being here. Thank you, Giulio Bonazzi, for being here. Uh, I'm very excited. I've been waiting for this interview a long time. Happy to have Aquafil and Giulio here. Um, yes, because of Econil, that everybody knows Econil, a brand of a regenerated nylon that comes 100% from waste material instead of oil. But I was more interested to look um, into Aquafil and the incredible power that they that you had in 10 years to create a, a network of partnership everywhere and just from an ingredient. And that was the huge power I wanted to talk with you about. So how did it happen? First, an ingredient. What does it mean to do ingredient branding, which is what you are doing, you have been doing for this latest 10 years? Think about this. When you cook a wonderful meal, you start from ingredients that are good or it's difficult to, go, to cook a, a wonderful meal. And ingredient branding means to have an ingredient inside the product that is helping to create the value of the product. This is what is making something as an ingredient indispensable and difficult to replace. While if you bring something that is easy to replace, it is difficult that an ingredient is bringing value. So if I look at this today, these ideas today, I think it's very strong to be an ingredient, especially when we talk about sustainability. But how was it 10 years ago? How was the, the situation with ingredients? Was it so easy to be an, a powerful ingredient? Um, what, does, what, what are the strengths of being an ingredient as opposed to be a final product? Well, when we started this incredible journey, uh, in reality, we found a very bumpy road. And... Uh, it was not so easy to introduce uh, this concept and uh, to see Econil becoming the most favorite ingredient uh, chosen uh, by the textile uh, and uh, luxury uh, industry. But uh, there is a but, of course. Uh, we didn't give up. And so step by step, uh, we could explain the value which is behind Econil. And this is what is making, make, making Econil really different than the other ingredients. Then being an ingredient, clearly it's a little bit tricky or difficult because of course, what the final consumer remembers is the final product. Uh, is the final product that is looking beautiful or that is having famous uh, names. So we are you know, a little bit below uh, this level, but nevertheless, contributing to creating a product uh, with values, then you can find also a good recognition. Exactly. So a, a small ingredient, and but you created an empire, I have to say. And I know it is different from the inside. Because just to give some context to the people who are listening, um, with Econil, you created a numerous a number of partnerships with big brands in the fashion, design, automotive industry, and more is coming. 
Uh, then you created partnership with NGO to create the LTTs initiative, which we have an episode about if you want to look at. Um, so to recover fishnet from the ocean to transform them into Econin Nylon, you create partnership now with uh, different uh, entities around the world who recover fishnet, but also carpet. You also looked into the construction of carpet to make a more sustainable carpet. Same thing with the jacket and some fashion items. Uh, you even re recover the copper from the fishnets. You recover energy, excess they energy. make a lot of confusion. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's amazing the amount of partnership that you have starting from an ingredient. So how do you build this network of partnership? What, is, what, is, what are the ingredients of a big, big and strong partnership? Well, uh, this uh, happened step by step. Uh, we were lucky at the beginning to find people who really believed in Econil, like for example, uh, Stella McCartney, that is one of uh, the brand that at the beginning made me very proud because she started with this concept uh, as a pioneer. It, she, so she was not a follower, but she was a beginner. And then, you know, uh, slowly we could uh, go upstream and downstream. So today we have more than 2,000 customers worldwide making garments, fashion, swimwear, uh, sport apparel, uh, bags, uh, shoes, sneakers, uh, raincoats like Barbary, just uh, to mention one, Prada, Gucci, Stella McCartney, and many, many uh, others. But also, as you uh, correctly explain, going upstream, because if you want to make a product like Econil Nylon starting from waste, you have, first of all, to rescue nylon waste. So you must understand where products made with nylon inside are ending their life. And if you want to rescue waste, you have to partner with companies that are collecting waste. That is why we invested in a company in Norway called Nofil, uh, that is rescuing fishing nets, especially from uh, Norway and Sweden, and now trying to get the permits to rescue waste from Iceland and Greenland. And then uh, with, uh, uh, we purchased a company actually uh, that is working between uh, Arizona and California collecting carpets, because the two main post-consumer streams contributing, contributing to make Econil are represented by fishing nets and uh, carpets. So, you know, it's a continuous, uh, very exciting work that never and, like we say, Econil is giving endless possibilities because it can go for a numerous applications, including 3D printing and plastic uh, or, and injection molding, and of course, carpet flooring. Mm -hmm. So let's look into some partnership, um, which was the hardest one, for example, that you had to build in these 10 years of Econil? Well, uh, give me the option not to answer uh, to this question. I would say that every partnership uh, is beautiful uh, for us and every partnership has a meaning. Even with those who are maybe not so keen or not uh, uh, believing that much into sustainability and circularity and, and maybe they are involved first because they have to do something and to demonstrate that they are not uh, lagging behind, you know. But at the end, they compromise themselves. So once they start this journey, it's difficult for them also to pull out and then returning to do what they were doing uh, before. So uh, the most difficult one, I don't know. Let's say that I can say that one that is, in my opinion, uh, representing a cornerstone, something that, you know, uh, is a kind of... Uh, uh, division between uh, the old, the past system, and the new system is the one with Napapiri. Napapiri is a brand of WEF Corporation, and we have worked uh, with them about three years to completely redesign their one of their iconic products that then they rebranded with the Circular Series jackets that are made with monomaterial. So in this case, we had to develop all this, the, um, the components uh, of this jacket like um, linings or uh, outer, uh, outer layers, um, products that are inside for coibentation uh, and uh, um, uh, sewing threads, 
labels, uh, fasteners and zippers and buttons, you know, every single component made with nylon six, of course, retaining performance and uh, being also looking great. And this has been quite challenging, but very instructive because we have demonstrated that we can create uh, a circular product. The circular series jacket are actually a circular product. There is a beautiful case studies uh, about this product on the, the latest book about the Ellen MacArthur Foundation about um, circular economy in fashion, uh, where they talk about this jacket with 35, I think it was uh, pieces, all made with nylon and all the research and investigation to do it. It was very exciting. Um, so this was for sure the, the mo one of the most exciting, I guess. Um, so what was the moment where um, there was the big change for Econil and for Aquafil? What would you say was the pivot moment where everything changed and maybe from being very difficult, it became a bit, little bit more easy or more clear? Or... Well, we as a company, uh, we formalized our uh, desire to change back in 2007. And we also gave a name to this process, calling it the Eco Pledge. It's an internal uh, naming where actually we created a, an organization that was taking care about uh, energy and recycling. We called this at that time. Today we are working also on eco design, on waste procurement, also on development of other products that we rescue while rescuing nylon uh, uh, waste, like you mentioned, copper or uh, other uh, materials that are inside carpets or fishing nets or uh, what we are taking back uh, home. Uh, actually, mm, in 2011, uh, the uh, plant, the Econil Regeneration System plant uh, started in uh, Ljubljana. This is when we started to spend the first uh, couple of tenths of millions of euros. So it was not a small uh, investment. Uh, please remember that until today, we have spent about 200 million euros, okay, to make about 40% of aquafil fibers made with Econil. So we still have another 60% uh, to go. And uh, this is uh, practically when uh, there was a, a non-return uh, point. We started to spend real money and then it had to work. Uh, the first uh, three years uh, were a little, how can you say, painful. <laughs> and then slowly from 2015, 2016, both the plant and the market started to, uh, let's say, respond as we were expecting, or even better than that. Mm -hmm. So what is, what is your most proud of uh, in these 10 years of struggles with Econi Line, I guess, to make it grow? My people. Of course, uh, if uh, uh, we are making this is because uh, I have incredible people uh, working for, uh, for me, uh, coming from many different countries, uh, of course, uh, with, uh, you know, doctorates, post-doctorates, but also without any uh, graduation. And uh, I am particularly proud because today I must say they are more advanced than, uh, than I am, you know, so the, the beginning, maybe they were a little doubtful. Uh, some of my manager also said that I was a little crazy. And actually, we are all crazy now, or we are the craziest in the industry. So my people, this is what is making me most uh, proud of. Is there a new challenge that you would like to address or a big brand that you would like to conquer? All, of course, <laughs> I want to conquer all of them, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I believe that uh, the biggest challenge of the industry is making fast fashion circular. This is what uh, the textile industry really needs to do. Because when you design a luxury product that is super expensive, it must not be designed for recycling. It must be designed possibly to last forever and to retain its value as an art product. Okay. So if someone is telling me that wants to give me back his uh, a Gucci backpack that is, cost, that is costing like a fortune, I take it back, but I don't recycle, I resell it. Okay, why? Fast fashion is different because by definition uh, doesn't last as much as a luxury product. So this is where we have to work and trying to find uh, solutions for uh, the future generations. 
again, back to this 10 years of a big revolution that Aquafil did in the industry and, and, uh, and, and within the company. What would you say are the most important qualities to be a, a leader in sustainability? You talked a lot about your team. Uh, you talked a lot about uh, the, the change that happened in, in, the, in the company. Uh, how do you make that change happen as a leader? Because first, I, it, it's myself uh, that had to change and uh, started the, the, the same journey. And at uh, the beginning, I had to study a lot. I read a lot of books. I had the fortune of meeting incredible people like, I don't know, uh, Sylvia Earle, just to mention uh, one of them, but you know very well, uh, Samara, because you helped me with, uh, with her, Janine Benius, and many others. I could really uh, say that I have been so fortunate to meeting some of the most incredible people uh, around the world. And then I, I read a lot of books and I tried to understand. And then together with my people, trying to give a definition of what sustainability and circularity meant and still means for, uh, for Aquif. So it's, uh, the change must start from yourself and then you can change your people and your organization or they change you, but I say it's yourself that uh, must uh, change. So has that uh, definition of sustainability changed and how in these 10 years? No, uh, actually we didn't change that much our uh, definition of sustainability. But we learned that the journey was much more complicated than we were expecting at the beginning. Uh, actually, I always like to say that if I had known uh, how complicated this journey was, maybe I would, would not have started. You know? But luckily, I didn't know. I vastly underestimated the, the difficulties that we had to, that we encountered, that we had to resolve. And so we uh, started. But our definition of sustainability has not uh, changed that much. Clearly, we have passed from uh, a big work of uh, validating waste for re Econil regeneration system uh, to working hard with customers in design for remanufacturing. Because this is uh, when we are really able, like for example, with the Napa Pieri circular series, uh, to make products uh, that are really easily and fully recyclable. So, expanding the lens, um, are you optimistic about sustainability? And I mean the big sustainability uh, in in the world, really, or in our future. And, and what do you feel is missing maybe to implement or to, to accelerate it, especially? I believe that in the long term, this is the only possible choice. So it's a matter of do it or die. If you don't change, you die. The problem is what is happening in between. So I am more uh, optimistic for the long term future because it will be evident and there will be uh, let's say uh, uh, changes, structural changes that will force you to dive into uh, this process. In the short term, I I'm a little bit more worried because today greenwashing and blue washing are, how can I say, at the highest uh, possible uh, level. But never mind. Uh, what I always like to say is that if you really want to change the world, we need three things legislation a good legislation with the EPR systems uh, that are helping the industry to become circular. Education, because with better education, you can have people that are more conscious of what they are doing. And eco-design. So uh, how can I say a trend or a work or a, a big investment in uh, redesigning products uh, with uh, sustainability or circularity in uh, which is really what you're doing with all your partners. One last question. Is there a place where Giulia Bonazzi recharge and uh, <laughs> take positivity and, uh, and energy? Yes, uh, there is. And uh, uh, it's been particularly helpful uh, during the first pandemic period. And now also during this very sad time with the war in Ukraine, that is with my young talents. So when I need to recharge my batteries, I organize meetings with 20 or 30 of my best talents. And, uh, you know, I, I put them in circle and then we start uh, talking and they, I'm asking them, 
what they can do uh, better, what they are uh, looking for, what can we do. They tell me, uh, or they ask me a lot of questions about uh, where we are heading to, what uh, we are really doing. So this is a moment that uh, it really helps me to recharge uh, my battery. Young people need and must send us to retirement. You know, this is what they uh, compete, con continuously repeat to them. You know, we are old. We are part of the old uh, fashion, old generation. They are the future. And with this note, I think it's a great ending. Thank you so much, Giulio. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, I'm, I, I hope to see you in the next uh, episode. And thank you so much, Giulio. Thank you.